everyone, I'm Hannah and this is my schoolmate Cassandra. We are part of the Holy Childhood Kids. We help kids all over the world. It's all part of life at school. Study, play, pray, have fun, and learn. About theater arts and video editing and growing stuff to eat and planning for our futures and for the future of the whole world. That's where Holy Childhood comes in. Through Holy Childhood, kids all across Canada are helping to make the world a better place. So join us on an adventure around the world. We will explore the lives of children who in some ways are just like us. In other ways, they live lives that are really, really different. Together, we are the Holy Childhood Kids. Together, we can make the world a better place. Today, we are going to visit Uganda. We travel to East Central Africa, and Uganda rests west of Kenya and east of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The official languages are English and Swahili, but there are also 56 indigenous communities in Uganda, each speaking its own language. There are 35 million people in Uganda. At 66% of the population, Christianity is the largest religion, and at 42% of the population, Roman Catholics are the majority religion. Muslims make up 16%, while people following traditional beliefs are about 18%. The Muslims were actually the first offshore faith to arrive in the 1830s. The British Protestants arrived in 1877, and then the Catholic missionaries began to arrive in 1879. The Catholic missionaries, from the beginning of their time in Uganda to now, have made a real difference to the life of the country, helping kids to read and write, and later on, with providing higher education so Ugandans themselves have become the teachers and the healthcare workers. Health remains a huge issue for Uganda. Malaria, respiratory infections, and diarrhea are the primary causes of death among children. Life expectancy at birth is estimated to be 53 years in 2012. The infant mortality rate is approximately 61 deaths per 1,000 children in 2012. There were eight physicians per 100,000 persons in the early 2000s. The 2006 Uganda Demographic Health Survey indicates that roughly 6,000 women die each year due to pregnancy-related complications. But there is also good news. Uganda's elimination of user fees at state health facilities in 2001 has resulted in an 80% increase in visits. Over half of the increase is from the poorest 20% of the population. This policy has been cited as a key factor in helping Uganda achieve its Millennium Development Goals. <laughs> AIDS has been the same sad story in Uganda as in other African countries. More than 940,000 people are currently living with HIV and AIDS, and more than 1.2 million children have lost one or both parents to this disease. But Uganda has also been among the rare HIV success stories. One of the reasons is that Ugandans decided to be open about the disease, and that meant prevention education programs could succeed. In the 1980s, more than 30% of Ugandan residents had HIV. This had fallen to 6.4% by the end of 2008, the most effective national response to AIDS of any African country. And the missionaries are involved in all aspects of healthcare, especially in HIV AIDS education and prevention. International health experts credit the Catholic Church and Catholic Mission Hospitals for providing leadership in AIDS mobile home care and programs for AIDS widows and orphans. Today, the Church is a national leader in coordinating efforts to bring the crisis to an end.
Perhaps nothing is so sad as the legacy of the civil war in northern Uganda, a situation that the church is very involved in. The conflict, one of Africa's longest running, has resulted in a very severe humanitarian crisis that will take generations to recover from. It is all because of the rebel group and the religious cult known as the Lord's Resistance Army, or LRA, which since 1987 has waged guerrilla warfare to overthrow the government and establish a state based on LRA's religious beliefs. Although the LRA and Ugandan government reached a ceasefire in 2006, its violence has left a mark on Uganda's northern districts. An estimated 100,000 civilians were killed by the rebels. More than 30,000 children were abducted by the LRA to train as soldiers, and about 1.8 million people fled their homes to escape the violence. Almost everyone in the world has heard of the Gulu Nightwalkers. At the height of the conflict, each night, tens of thousands of children between the ages of 8 and 14 would walk up to 20 kilometers from internally displaced people's camps to shelters in larger towns, especially Gulu, to avoid abduction by the LRA, and then they would walk the 20 kilometers home again the next morning. Many Catholic missionaries supplied these shelters, and recently, Catholic missionary sister Pauline Akeo was given a special award for her work in the reintegration into society of over 5,000 child soldiers and 2,500 abducted adults. Having herself escaped abduction by the LRA in 2003, she has an intimate understanding of the crisis and its consequences in northern Uganda. We kids at Holy Childhood are very moved by Sister Pauline's story and the Gulu Walkers. We do our best to help out the missionaries, raising money that positively affected the lives of more than 2,600 children. So far, we have provided desks and school supplies for a nursery school, built two classrooms onto a school in a rural area, purchased mosquito nets to prevent malaria, and provided playground equipment for the kindergartens. And there's a lot more to do. Illiteracy is common in Uganda, particularly amongst girls. Although some primary education is compulsory under law, in many rural communities this is not observed as many families cannot afford uniforms, books, and equipment. Without the church's schools, there would be hardly any education at all in rural Uganda. <laughs> Uganda's church is still very young and there is a shortage of priests, so the kids are raised to understand that one day they will have important roles in the church as lay people. In the old days, missionaries would come from places like Canada to help out. It's still a missionary church, but the missionaries are born in Uganda. There's lots of work that needs to be done and Uganda needs our help. But this is a two-way street. The kids we help, help us too. They teach us about what is most important in life. Things like having fun, even when you don't have a lot of stuff. Things like the way kids love and care for their parents and other siblings. The way they work hard to help the family survive. It all begins with getting to know Uganda's kids a little better. So join us on this great learning adventure. Do a class project based on this video on Uganda. Write the Canadian Holy Childhood Association to get more background. Raise some money. Holy Childhood will let you know how the money is spent. Above all, keep these kids in Uganda in your prayers. For sure they will be praying for you. Together, all the Holy Childhood kids of the world are forming a huge circle of love. It's where you belong. <laughs>